The use of relentless confrontations such as we've seen at Vision Quest here in Arizona and at Elan back in Maine seems to be a fairly common technique. But we know so little about the troubled child industry that it's difficult to say just what is typical. The federal government has very little information on the subject. Someone in Washington can tell you how many cattle are shipped across state lines, but not how many troubled children. Within the states, standards and licensing requirements vary from strict to practically non-existent. Arizona was one of the first states to take a close look at its facilities for troubled kids, and the results were not reassuring. For years, several California communities had shipped troubled boys across the border to Arizona for treatment. The facility was called the Circle S Ranch, and it claimed to have an excellent program for rehabilitating delinquent and emotionally disturbed youngsters. The Circle S Ranch was created more than 20 years ago by a psychologist named Leo Stein. He chose not to be interviewed for this report. Just how many boys the ranch helped is a matter of debate. In 1978, the state of Arizona revoked the license of the Circle S Ranch. The investigation leading to that action began when a California boy ran away from Circle S and went to his social worker with allegations of beatings, abuse, and a bizarre sexual therapy. What sort of allegations did the boy make? About questionable treatment practices, um, the children being asked to simulate intercourse with a pillow, the um, boys were asked to uh, expose their genitals and, and describe the uh, workings of each part. Each child in the room was um, asked in turn to strike another child uh, who was being punished. My boy was asked, since he felt very strongly about his father, that he was to simulate eating his father's genitals at one point. I had got there and uh, everybody was playing basketball and such and I was still looking for this guy named Leo Stein and uh, I had asked the staff there, who is this guy named Leo? and. Uh, he said he's right behind you and I turned around and his first words to me was uh, do you ever masturbate that's when I sort of got the hint that this place is a little uh, weird you know kids have told me that Leo Stein used to spit in boys faces did he ever do that to you yeah about a hundred times that way when I first went there he used to spit on me all the time they more or less uh, uh, scared the hell out of all of us in order for us to conform to society. You don't say anything wrong about Papa Stein or you get your face kicked in. Sometimes there was maybe 10, 20 kids beating up on just one kid. He used Freud, turned around into, uh, into the way he wanted to use it. Uh, you couldn't even call it Freudian. It's Steinism. Is all it is, is it's just something Stein took and turned around. Donald was 15 years old when a homemade explosive device was found in his school locker. The juvenile court sent him to Circle S. His mother made a visit there. On our Christmas visit to the ranch, um, we left the office and went out to the car, and one of the staff members walked up towards us, and my husband kept him busy talking some distance from the car, and Donald and I went over to the car, and. I gave him his letter from his sister, and he read it, and he says, I'm not allowed to have mail here. And so I said, oh, Donnie, you know, and started to put my arms around him. And uh, he jumped back, and he says, oh, my God, Mother, he says, don't touch me. He says, because, because I came out to the car and hugged you when you came in June. He said, I had to pretend to have intercourse with you in group. And I had to do it every day until I had an ejaculation, and it took me 27 days. And I was just stunned. I was just stunned. I, I didn't know what to do. I just backed off, and I didn't even cry. Mr. Stein would say to a kid when he first came to the ranch, what does every boy want to do? If the kid didn't know, Mr. Stein would say, have intercourse with your mother. From that, it went to screwing pillows, They, you know, the duffel bags. They and he'd lay those out on the floor and he'd tell us, okay, lay on the pillows and uh, reenact sex like that's your mother. Donald came home very frightened. Um, he would not interact with the family at all. Um, it took me about four months to the point where 
you know, if we were in the kitchen together, my kitchen's about four foot wide, you know, that Donald did not back off away from me when I walked into the kitchen. What did happen to you? Becoming a person who just hates. And... That's about it. That's really all I do is hate. Is... I hate the courts. I hate Stein. It's just a mess. You just put a kid away and forget about him. Don't give a damn what happens to him. The Circle S is closed now, but that does not lessen the emotional harm that Donald and others say was done to them. For all we know, there are worse places than Circle S operating today. It is important to remember that the truth about Circle S came out almost by accident, and that right up to the last minute, government agencies in several states were using public money to subject youngsters to what Leo Stein called therapy. That's a rather frightening example of just how little any of us know about some aspects of the treatment of troubled children in this country. We need controls uh, where we know who is doing what to whom, and that that is not harmful, because someone once said that therapy is very much like a, like a knife. Therapy is a tool that we have, a very powerful tool that we have to help people, and we can use it to harm people, to hurt people, to do things like that. You may wonder, as we have, why there are no national guidelines or professional standards, standards which could minimize the possibility of troubled youngsters who are sent away for help actually being harmed instead. Dr. Shore is the president-elect of the American Orthopsychiatric Association, which is concerned with mental and behavior disorders in young people. He believes that experts like himself are just beginning to recognize the national extent of the problem and the desirability of some sort of standards. Again, the problem seems to be lack of information. Recently, the University of Chicago, with federal money, began a nationwide survey to determine how many alternative treatment programs and related institutions are operating in this country and what sort of treatment techniques they are using. That's a start. But the important questions remain. Which treatments work best for which kids? And which treatments are dangerous? The only way those questions can be answered is by long-term scientific follow-up studies on the graduates of a cross-section of leading treatment facilities. Studies which would provide objective data on what happens to kids after treatment at places like Elan or Vision Quest. As of this moment, no one is doing that. Robert Rogers, NBC News.